everyone, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. So you may have seen in the past where I've done different handwriting conversion videos and I've talked about how it's really great to be able to preserve these memories of our loved ones. So um, my birthday and my mom's birthday are coming up and so this will actually be our first birthdays without my dad after his passing earlier this year. So um, I have some videos including this one where we're going to be um, converting handwriting into different items. So I have this clock set. It's from just like a little craft set that my dad got from like the VA. And he made me this really cute clock, but unfortunately when I moved, the um, arms just got completely damaged. They don't work, the battery doesn't work. But he left me a little note in here. It says, love is timeless, dad. And so it's one of the few things I have with his handwriting. He wasn't like, we weren't big card writers or anything. So I wanted to find a way to preserve it without, being super cheesy or some way that I could kind of hold on to it. So what we're going to do is we are engraving it onto a watch band. So I do have a full video on how I do watch bands. Um, you can find it in my channel in the description, but we're gonna be using that same process, but we're also going to be converting our handwriting into a vector. So for this specific video, I'm actually going to be using my iPad the wood grain on that was very difficult, so we're gonna be using a free Vector iPad program called Vectornator that we are able to convert it very quickly. So there's a lot going on in this video. Hopefully you enjoy it. Why don't you go ahead and give it a thumbs up now. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more uploads. And if you are ready to get a Glowforge of your own, you can use the link in the description to save up to $500 on a new machine. Okay, so I am using an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil. This is just a first generation. I have old stuff. So a lot of people trace in Procreate. I'm actually going to trace in Vectornator. So Vectornator is a free iPad program. Get out of here, I don't wanna subscribe. And the great thing is that it creates it in vector. So Procreate can be easy to use and pick up, but then you have to convert it as a vector if you wanna do more with it. Um, some things are totally fine. Like you can do it and then, and then just engrave it because Glowforge can engrave a PNG. However, I always like having vector as much as possible. So I'm gonna do the plus sign and I am going to import and then choose from my photo. So this is a photo in my camera roll. You can see right here, this is the picture that I took. You can see the grain in the wood makes it very difficult to kind of make it work with, with the tracing and silhouette. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the top right here. Now Vectornator is a typical vector program, so if you can figure out the translation between what you're used to and whatever program you are working with, like silhouette, it's pretty easy to pick up. So let me know if you want me to do some videos on that. So we're gonna go to our layers. So you can see here's my first layer, this is my image. I'm gonna immediately create a new one and I'm going to lock this one in place just so it doesn't move. So let's close that. And I'm gonna hit my layer two just so that I know I'm working in that as well. So over here are our tools. So we've used this point edit in videos before. I'm gonna use this pencil tool right here. And now you can control how smooth it is. So if you do this one right here, 85%, when you do this, it really smooths it out for you. So I'm gonna do probably around like 20%, let's 24%, let's see how it goes. And then this right here is kind of where you work on your style appearance. This is going to be a stroke, so I wanna edit my stroke. So you can see my stroke width, I'm gonna make it a little bit larger. Let's see how it looks. So let me kind of close this. So you can see it's about the same as it. So let me go back and I'm just gonna play with it a little bit more. Let me make it a little less smooth. I want it to look like, like, you know, handwriting. And I can go to my layers panel, take this eye off and kind of see what this looks like. So I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna hit the back button, make it a little bit less. And I'm actually gonna make my stroke a little bit smaller too. Then you can also do brush but I'm not really gonna do that. So let's go back and let's see how this looks. Okay, so let's look at our layers, hide it. So I like that it looks a little bit rough here, okay? It looks, let me zoom in, 
not as smooth. I like that. I think that looks more like handwriting. I don't want it to be super smooth. Otherwise, I would have just drawn it with a brush. It kind of loses a little bit of the impact of it. So I'm happy with this. So now I'm just going to zoom in and keep tracing. You kind of follow the path that's taken with writing. And I'm not going to make it perfect. Like obviously the ease could curve more, but that's not how it is on this wood. And then we have our timeless. I don't like that. So I'm going to hit this back button. And then I don't like that. So I'm going to zoom in more so I can be more precise. And now I can zoom out and I'm just pinching to zoom. And then comma. So he always started like this. I don't like that. Let's try it again. I don't like that either. There we go. So sometimes you kind of have to go to the outside of the line so you can get that separation. And then bring that. Okay, so now we have our trace. I think it's pretty good. Let's take our layers. Hide that. Oh, nope, not unlock it. Okay. So you can see that's pretty close to how it looks. I want it to be like that. So I'm going to take my pointer tool, select this entire thing. And if you look, these are lines with a stroke. So I want to convert this to a vector. I want it to be an outline. So the way you do that is you go over to um, this right here, path. So this is similar to your modify panel that we're used to in Silhouette Studio, and then do outline. So check it out. So now these are outlines. However, let me see if I can zoom in more. It did outline to the stroke. It did it weld. So we have these overlapping lines still. So we still need to take care of that. So we're going to scroll out. I'm forgetting my scroll terms today. And we are going to weld it right here. Look at the picture. Weld. Now, check it out, it's all together. So super easy, we were able to convert it into vector. So now we're going to export, so hit this little gear. We are going to do SVG. And then export. And so I'm going to email this to myself to get it to my computer and then I'll show you how I kind of modify it a little bit more in Silhouette Studio for my watch band and then how we send it to Glowforge. So check it out. So here is my design. It is in SVG. You can double click. You can see we have our point edit mode. And so let's zoom in. So now we're going to make a few edits. I actually want this to be stacked. So um, because it's an um, outline compound path, I can't ungroup it. So I need to release compound path. So let me turn on my line color, but turn off my fill. So you can see the outline of everything I'm working with. So let's right click, release compound path. So you can see we have these little sections in here that we need to adjust. So if I'm going to take this and kind of stack it on top of each other so it'll look better on the watch band. And I'm going to make it a little bit closer to bring that down a little bit. Now don't forget these are all solid objects right now at the time for the time being because we have because we've released compound path basically like this circle here is sitting on top of that shape there. So a weird fluke in Glowforge, um, we are going to have to kind of subtract out these top parts from the bottom one to get our overall shape again. So I'm going to hold down shift and click on all these little parts one two. That one's has a little bit of an opening three. And then really quickly, I'm going to right click group. 
So now you can see we have this and we have that. So I'm gonna grab the L and the rest of this, right click, group. So basically we're taking one object, we're making one object modify another object. So these, this group of uh, circles here are one object. This love is one object as well, or at least being treated as one. So let me fill it in so you can get a better visual of what we're working with now. So I got this inside part. I gotta click on this inside part. There we go, I think, I, yeah, I got it. Then red. All right, so we have that. So now we can take both of these. We have them both selected. We can see two boxes here. Go to the modify panel and subtract. So now you can see it's cut out from there. We got some weirdness going on right here, so let's check it out. I'm just literally gonna get rid of this. I'm not really sure what it is, but you know, it's kind of the what happens when you have that vector thing. It might've been a hidden line in there. So let's go in there. And I don't, I want to keep this. So I'm going to do some hacking and double click and stretch this out. So it overlaps in there like that. And let's try welding that. Okay, so that's better. I'm gonna double click in here and look at these points and literally just delete these points until that line is gone. And so let me go right here. And sorry, I can't zoom in anymore. I'm at my max zoom. And you know, realistically, I could just stretch this out, but I didn't think about that. And so we're moving on. All right, so now we have this. Shift, click, subtract. So now we have our one object right there. Oh, sometimes this will happen when you bring in SVGs. This is just a weird fluke with having um, multiple vector programs, but it's fine. All right, and then we have our E right here. And actually, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have to stretch this out. This thing's tiny anyway. Yeah, it's like three quarters, like not even a whole inch. So let's set up my workspace to be 12 by 12. There's no rhyme or reason, I just like having 12 by 12 workspace. It's just from using Silhouette for so long. <laughs> look at all that room and I like trying to work at this like super zoomed in look. That's why we do vectors because we can zoom in and out. Well, among other reasons. Okay, so let's super zoom in and out. So we have that there. I saw some weird extra lines in here. So let's go ahead and take this, hold down shift, click on what I want to keep and then delete. That junk is gone. And I'm not concerned right here about this because I'm going to have it on a watch band. It's gonna be really small. But what you can do is you can point at it. So I'm gonna click this point. I think there's another one right next to it. Click this point right here, delete it and look. It corrected itself. All right, so let's do our timeless. So we have this. Oh, I'm in point edit mode though, still. So. This, hold down shift, click this, click this, and then you can choose to do that. It's pretty small, won't really show up much, but we're gonna do it. Right click, group, and then hold this, hold shift, click your text right here, and subtract. Oh, modify, subtract. And the reason why we're doing this, hold down shift, click on that that we're keeping, delete. So it's keeping our our vector, which is interesting. I'm not really sure why that's happening, but I think sometimes when you take a vector from one program to another, that happens. Um, the reason why we're doing this is that Glowforge, for some reason at this point in time, even if you make it a compound path and you know there's an opening in there, it will treat this as two separate layers and so it'll engrave this bottom part fully and then it'll engrave this top part here. So we don't want that, so we need to make them, um, we need to subtract them out. So hold down shift, grab that, group, grab this, hold shift, grab this, group. I'm using shortcuts. So now I'm gonna hold down shift, click on the dad, subtract again. Weird thing happening, but I'm gonna hold down shift on what I wanna keep and then delete. And the reason why I could tell there was extra in there was because there was, um, the line was darker. So I'm gonna do that and subtract there. So you can see right there, that line is darker. So I know there's two stacked on top of each other. All right, so we have that all set there. Okay, now let's zoom out. Let's view the whole workspace. 
Now we can fill this entire thing in. Except, see this like extra stuff on this M? Let's hold down shift, grab this, and delete that. Okay. So now we can right click, make it a compound path, or a group, doesn't matter. And then let's fill this in. So that's our design. Of course it looks a little bit messy, but that's how it was written. So we're gonna leave it like that. So I'm gonna copy this and put this into my Apple Watch jig file. Um, I got this from Etsy a really long time ago. And just like a general word of caution, I have another video on engraving watch bands. Um, this is a band that I have myself. Um, you want to check your copyright rules with Apple. They're very strict. Um, and so I can't really tell you where you can buy bands, but there are different places you can buy them. Um, but it may be difficult. So this is for the larger size. I'm just going to get rid of this. And so now we're going to take this, shrink it down. Whoa, that was way too small. That was very quick. And just so it's easier for me to work with, I'm going to select this entire design, hold down shift. So it rotates at 45 degree angles and then bring it over here. So I want this writing to be right, um, underneath, like right here where my watch band meets. And then, so I can also see it when I'm looking down. So I'm gonna do that. And so these holes are there so you can figure out um, where it will lay out on your watch band. So you can see, I want it to be just under this curve and before this opening. That's kind of where I have a lot of my designs. All right, now let's zoom out. And so now that we're going to send this to our Glowforge, I'm actually going to get rid of these blue dots or I'll just leave it on there and do ignore because I don't need it to cut my template. So we're going to be doing a jig. So this will allow me to cut out a space for my watch bands and it also makes sure that my design is aligned perfectly on there. So to make sure that this is a different function, I'm going to get my text and I'm going to change my line color to black. So now I have three line colors, this magenta, this blue and then the black. So that is what's going to be engraved. So I'm going to put that right on the bottom so that when I look down at my watch, I can see it. So we're going to select this entire thing right here, go to file, save selection, save to hard drive, and just make sure you're choosing SVG as your file type. So I'll see you in Glowforge in just a second. All right. So here I am at my Glowforge. So I'm going to take out this wood that I was using for a previous project and I'm going to put in cardboard for my jig. So I just use leftover Amazon boxes. Um, some people will use the same jig over and over and just kind of set the dimensions in the software. I don't, I, I just don't like doing that. I'd rather just have a fresh jig every time so I can like be 100% sure that everything is in the right place. So I'm just gonna use these um, hold down pins that I cut out with some MDF a while ago. Um, these are in a lot of Glowforge groups, the Glowforge forum, so it's very easy to find the file. Okay, right, so we're going to pin it down, and then we're going to get this set up in the Glowforge software. All right, so my watch band is loading into my software. I just turned on my Glowforge, so it's gonna take me a couple minutes for it to be ready. But you can see I have my functions over here on the side. So we're not engraving right away, so we're gonna click this and ignore. We're never going to cut these little sections, so we're gonna hit that and ignore. And this is what we're going to be cutting. So I found some good settings for myself for cardboard. I do speed at 180 and 90 power. Again, I don't think I said in this video, so again, doesn't apply. But again, if you watch my videos, please make sure you're doing test cuts. Um, a lot of things are not one size fit all. Cardboard can vary too. So don't take my word as like the ultimate truth for that, but that is what I have found works for me. Also, if you do these settings and then suddenly they stop working, that's a good indicator that I'm setting focus, hitting these three dots and clicking in here. That's a good indicator that your machine needs cleaning. So definitely check that out as well. So while that's setting focus and giving me a better idea of where my material is, I'm going to rotate my design and bring that into where the cardboard is, kind of a guesstimate of where. So you can see it shifted a little bit, but it'll still fit. So we're all set. We have these two functions ignored. So we are cutting out the placement for our watch band first. So let's go ahead and print.
Okay, this cut is done. You can see here is my watch band. I have it in this cute little light pink color. So we're going to unhook this. We have our two pieces here. Realistically, I don't even have to put this piece in there, but I will just for the sake of everything. So everything's done. We're gonna lift this up. I have my phone doing the time lapse. And you're gonna keep everything in except for these two sections. So, okay? So be careful not to move it. So you can keep this in here. In reality, you could even not even cut that box and just cut these right into that template. So we're gonna pop this in here. And then we're gonna pop this in here. All right, so we have one, two, we're all set like that. Now we're gonna bring our lid down and then I'm gonna show you how I set up in my software the right settings for my watch band. Okay, so now we have this in here. We're going to ignore this, the, the jig. And then we're gonna go over to our text and we're going to hit engrave and then check this out. I have settings saved in here. And for watch band, it's a little bit different. We have our speed at 600, 70, 65 power, but the focus height is going to be manual at 0 0.108. So we're gonna set it up at that specific height so that it kind of goes the right spot with our watch band. So we don't have to do anything else. We have this set. I am not going to set focus. I'm gonna do that manual focus. And then we're gonna just kind of just choose cardboard as our material. Actually, mm, let's, choose, let's choose cardboard. We have it set like that. It still looks pretty head on, like right on. And then let's print. All right, I will see you in just a minute. All right, everybody, this is my final product. It might be a little bit difficult to see just because it's so small, but let's see if I can get it to show up. It's a cute little light pink band. I'll also put a picture in here, but it has the handwriting on it and I can put it on my watch and it's gonna go right here so I can kind of see it as I go throughout my day. So really great way, a practical way to do a handwriting gift, um, something that works for me. And so we use Vectornator, it's free, it's on the iPad, and then we did our watch bands and we engraved it with our Glowforge. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're ready to get a Glowforge of your very own, you can check out the link in the description to save up to $500 on a new machine.